Welcome, everybody, to another Battle of the Games review. You got right well, into it. Welcome, oh my everybody. God. Are you ready to battle for copyright oh reasons? <laughs> you guys are too fucking hyped right of now. Of the games. Because we actually didn't play games at all today. We are here in the studio for business. In the stew. We are recording. Stew? Strictly recording. It is only 9 p.m. Versus the normal midnight that we start recording. But anyways. We're doing so good. It's only 8. Oh, we're I here. guess it is kind of nine, we're here. close to nine. Eight fifty-four. The next Battle of the Games video Central review, time. and that is for the game Boone Lake. It is Kenzie's number four. Boone Lake. And she will explain it right? to you. Boone. Oh, God. You want me to explain? It is your number four. Do you I'm really do bad at explaining games. I'm going to do it's it. It's got these pieces. You're going down a let's river. Do these things. Yeah. You're choosing let's, actions let's. from a... From a board of actions and then moving it down and then I think she's just explaining a board game. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's like, you have you your have actions have consequences. I'm so bad at explaining <laughs> games. So on Boon Lake, you are basically trying to uh, refurbish, replenish the land of Boon Lake by placing cattle pastures and building buildings and sending your people out uh, that just represent the population, you know, growing on the board. Are you Are you replenishing it or are you... Settling it, resettling it, uh, like the good colonizers that you know some of us, some of us are. Yeah. Um, and while you're doing that, you are also playing cards down. You have a board in which you can you have kind of a planning of buildings and different population people that you can unlock, and you have a resource mechanic in which you have two boats that provide you with a resource um, of a type. There are four. Damn, I lost it. And yeah. throughout the game, you can upgrade those resources so you can be getting more resources to play better cards because there's also a card mechanic in this game. There's a lot. Yeah, the action system, there is a board that has a row of actions, and every time you take an action, it will reveal. You, are, you, you, know, you know the number, so it's not really a reveal, but you take an action tile from a section, move it down to the bottom, do the action on, on the tile. There's a secondary action on most of them, that is a kind of a, I lead, everyone else follows, except for one tile, and where the player who leads cannot also do the secondary action. Once you do that, you move your ship down a river that is central on the board that has some benefits on it. According to the number, basically how long it's been since that action was picked, you get more moves on the on the ship board. And you move down until you pass a dam. Yep. Mm -hmm. You pass a dam on the board, and that initiates a scoring, an interim scoring, in which you evaluate your board state and the main board state and gain income, you gain points, you pick a scoring tile that you you pick one scoring tile to score out of the four that were initially chosen by each player. That you will score each round. You will score each round Whether because you there can are four interim scorings that are not interim. There are three interim scorings that happen triggered by the passing of dams along the river. And then there is a final scoring that happens once Everyone has had the same amount of turns, and that dam has been passed. It works the same, just the timing is a little bit different. Settlers, towns, cities. You're building levers. Cows. There's so much going on. Yeah. yeah. The theme is weird, but the mechanics of the game are just... just. Yes. Very good. Oh, and if I we just love the way it all works together, because there's so much going on, but it's just all... We didn't say it, but this is a Mr. Fister banger. Mr. <laughs> Alexander Fister. <laughs> um, one of our favorites here. He's got his own shelf. We, have, we do have a shelf of the Mr. Fisters. Oh, he does GWT? Yeah. Cool. I thought so. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, Boom sorry. Like. What we do have today is our re reviews and ratings for the game in which we will start with Duenio. Um, It does make sense. Because I was getting Great Western Trail vibes but very does it, heavily. But does it make dollars? What a stupid joke. Go ahead. Anyway. <laughs> um, I'll be... Makes yen. I'll be very honest. Juan. Did not think I was going to like this. Like, just... Because I was judging a book by its cover. Kids, don't do that. <laughs> but we... Like, even when you were explaining the rules, I was like, oh, okay. I might like it. <laughs> and I did. I did like it, um, even though I got my ass handed to me. <laughs> um, I 
It is a lot to take in. It is. Your first play. It's a lot to take in. But like halfway through, I was like, okay, it's clicking. I got it. I got it. Um, Not enough to win it. Nope. <laughs> um, like you said, there, there was a lot happening. There was a lot to keep track of. And there's a lot to like, do I want to go this route? Do I want to do this? Do I do this? What? What? When do I do this? But I mean, otherwise, I feel like if it clicked earlier, if I or if I knew beforehand, like if I were to play it again, I think it'd be able to. I think it'd be able to get it down and be better. <laughs> There's also a lot of like when it's your turn to pick an action, thinking about the secondary action you're giving everyone else, yeah, mm-hmm. and uh-huh. what you might push up the next step. That your first time playing, you're pro- you're probably not worried about it at all. And I'm finding myself liking games that do that, that give everybody else some kind of action. Boon Lake, Earth, Ti, mm-hmm. like I'm liking, like I like that kind of stuff. It 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 just makes for no less downtime, <laughs> and you like know, you you feel like you're always doing something. Yeah. So all in all, he gives it a five. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Actually, I give it a three. Um, no, <laughs> I give it like. A, a, a crispy 7.5. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which Again, is good. It's good for good. me. That's a plus. That's, that's good a, for that's me. That's a thumbs up. That's a good Dwayne rating. Huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Especially for the first time ever playing it. That's not mm-hmm. horrible. Because, mm-hmm. um, like, honestly, I... Honestly. If it's not with y'all, I don't think I'll play it again. But if you were to say, hey, let's play Boon Lake, I will. Yeah. I liked it that I liked it that much. I liked it. What if we imagine we go, hey, you know, let's play Boon Lake today. And he goes, I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. At this hour? It was a welcome surprise. Awesome. If I could wrap it up in an overview. Welcome surprise. Okay. 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 Kev? Uh, I also like the game. Um, the mechanics do work really well together. Um, that is a that is the reason why the game shines. The theme is non-existent, borderline. <laughs> yeah, it's slapped on. Just absolute chaos. Especially the cards. Like it's, the cards for me make absolutely no fucking sense. Like, yeah, it's it's <clears throat> honestly it's bad. Like, <laughs> uh, and and to me that's that's a real shame because Great Western Trail I think does a really good job with theme. Um, Maracaibo does a really good job with theme. Um, Cooper Island, I is also very theme agnostic. I think there's not as much, um, Boone Lake. It, the problem is, is it almost like it tries because you've got the cattle and like, aren't you're some, you're, you have hats, right? Is not one of your icons or something like that. Hats. Am I, I might be making that up. Steam. The, your characters have hats. Your characters have hats. <laughs> the that's dudes, right. They okay, have hats. Yeah, that's right. I'm like, there's something, so like there's a little bit of like put a, a little effort in. They put a little bit of like there's a little cattling thing, but like you have a canoe on your board and then what that somehow generates resources. <laughs> yeah. Um it's a chaotic mess when it comes to the theme, um, which is a big detractor. Um, I think be- really it matters to you that much? It does. I like theme. Um and so at, you know, the the end result is I'm actually in the same place that Dwayne is where I I don't see the need to own the game at whatsoever. I would never go out of my way to ask to play the game. However, anytime it was offered to me, I would play the game, uh, and I'd, and I'd be happy to. Um, and that may change with with other plays. Um, you know, I you know it was helpful to get some advice from the two of you as you know, it's like, hey, why would I place a cow here or over here? Because, again, there's so much to digest in your first play um, that, like, understanding the long-term consequences of early actions, I mean, those can be really significant. So, like, if you'd tried to, uh, you know, wonderland me and say, hey, figure it out, I would have been probably irritated. And That's and, a different situation. <laughs> uh but, you know, being able to, to coach through and be like, hey, look, this is why you might do this or this or this, right? Choose whichever one you want to do, but understand these are the potential consequences of those decisions. I will say that definitely helped. Um, but, yeah, theme does matter. And, and I say that in the context, again, like now knowing and discovering in the last two minutes that GWT and Maracaibo are both from, from the same designer. This, they have similar mechanics that I enjoy, I think work really well. And the theme is better. 
So why wouldn't I choose to play a game that does mechanics and theme both really well? Um, so, so for me overall, it's a 7.5. Um, it could grow as I learn the mechanics more and have a level of intuitiveness to where I feel like that's unique and special. Um, there is something about the, the way that it can be frustrating. Like I don't uh, not appreciate the turn or the action mechanism, but there is definitely something about being like, oh. <laughs> Somebody now it's at the bottom and I can't do the thing I wanted to do. Yep. And 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 again, while you are able to take uh turns with other people and so it keeps it kind of going, you don't always like planning ahead, you can have a plan, but your plan can totally get totally screwed by the person in front of you or two in front of you or whatever. Um, which can be frustrating, which is fine. It's not the end of the world. Um, but it does impact like how much you potentially enjoy a game when you have those situations so it's, it's almost like an art sorry not to interrupt no. it's kind of like almost like some kind of rng because obviously you're not going to tell people your plan and they are not computers mm -hmm. you know making decisions yeah but you have to hope that they don't randomly yeah based on what they want pick mm -hmm. the thing that you want and you can so i i mean i, I you know I should, like there was enough going on where i didn't feel like i had a ton of like brain space to be focusing on what other people were doing. But because the center board had enough of a, of a presence, you could still kind of be like, I know Dwayne wants to do the cows. He wants to do the cattle one. He's going to be trying to do that. So I should think about some other stuff. So it did mitigate that a little bit, but like player boards, like the only thing I could tell that was going on on your side is that you had a bucket load of end game scoring. Surprise, surprise. Um, end game specialist. Yeah, right. That should be her title. <laughs> Ooh. End game specialist for there sure. There you go. Yeah. So enjoy it. It is a very solid game. Lack of theme is 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 really the thing that's holding it back from being an eight eight point five or higher. Okay. After that scathing review, <laughs> it is now my turn to talk about the game. And for those of you who don't know, I am someone who likes chaos. I like when a game <laughs> introduces randomness whether it's um just a complete for example like arc nova right card draws in a game with dice it's the rolling of the die that might determine your fate with uh variety because he's a lucky in, motherfucker in a game uh, maybe maybe i don't maybe. know but there's something about luck is a skill is what i've been told lately there's something about the fact that you can Especially never truly count on being able to do an action at the time that you need it to be available, which many times it is. Many times you're fine and you get to do what you, exactly what you want to do. But I find so much enjoyment out of making the best out of I have to just pick the second best thing, you know, and hope that this this will work for me. Yeah, I don't know. I am uh, I also don't win a lot of games because I'm always like doing maybe I'll try this extreme thing, you know, you know, but Regardless, Blame it on that. The, I, I rate this game really highly uh, based on the action selection mechanism and the fact that you can't ever truly count on it. And so you have to kind of shove things in sometimes on the secondary action of another of another player, even though it might have been better to do it on your turn so long as this action was going to be available. But lo and behold, it wasn't. So good thing that you did it the turn before, you know. But I give it a seven and a half. Themeless, kind of meh. I do like Fister games in general. I like have said a lot of his other games. I slightly, the slightest amount would rather play those than this one. And actually, I haven't played Sky Mines, so that can be under this. That's fine. And I would actually probably put this slightly above Cooper. But between Maracaibo and Great Western and Point Brethren. What was the other one you one. mentioned? Sky what? Sky, Sky Mines. Mines. I just haven't played it yet. It's oh. a, yeah. But yeah, seven and a half for me. I do really like it. I just wish it was prettier. I love the action mechanism though. So that's what really elevates it for me. My turn? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is my four. Um I obviously enjoy this game quite a bit. I not that I don't 
like themes of games. I just don't really care for it. I think that Boon Lake is such a high strategy game that like you're planning and like Kevin was saying, you're planning in the beginning of the game can affect you so highly later in the game. And that is what I absolutely love about this game. But I also love, love, love the, um, my goodness, I can talk, the action mechanism. Because yes, while someone can take the action that you're trying to do, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different action mechanisms. The bottom two are the only two that are negative for you. And they share pretty much the same mechanics. At least two of them have the same ones. So there's never truly taking a full action from you. Um, like there's different ways to go about what you need. And I think that that is like such a cool part of that um, to where like, okay, maybe they took this one part of it, but you could still do the end action of it on their turn. Um, and it's, it's all that planning of, okay, I wanted to do that main action, but they took it. So I have to settle for the second part. What am I going to do next on my turn? And it's like, Yes, it's constantly changing, but it's also I have this end goal that I need to meet of getting all my cows out or getting all my cities out. And that's where, yes, I do like to do end game scoring sometimes. Um, that kind of feeds Stop. into, okay, Kev. I don't usually do end game scoring with this game. It worked out mostly because I just pulled all of the cards for end game scoring. Um, and they were all mostly the same, so it was easy to score them. But... Um, but yeah, so you just work towards that goal and you just kind of do the actions that work for it. And I disagree with you. I think this game was so pretty with four players. Like when all of the different colors were out on the map, like all of the different player pieces. Yeah, the presence in is In the cool. beginning, no, it's not pretty. It's an ugly board, right? It's just nothing. The, the but, presence is cool, but is that different from, to me, that's different from like the presentation of the game. I agree. Mm. The art is very I will say like to add on i do love the variety in the cards and that your entire game kind of relies on the cards that you draw i like that i'm someone that likes that i, I don't it know if that's random your input or output yeah with like the passive things that you're drawing and like with levers that's also <laughs> what a weird thing to add <laughs> the mechanic this game yeah like i don't know i would have it would have been absolutely amazing to like in the development room when they were putting this together <laughs> and designing it and being like Mr. Fister is like how did you presenting stuff writing stuff down throwing throwing words out and you're just like this is one game <laughs> <laughs> this is like the this is the uh, this is the platypus of board games yeah <laughs> but regardless of theme that is very weird and seems all mashed together. Just the strategy and the way that the mechanics all work together for this and the way that you use resources and the way that goes with your cards and then the, the different day, night, evening on the cards and the way that flows with your actions and the different actions. I think it all just works really, really well together. And I don't usually lose this game and it's really nice for me. So this is probably an eight and a half for me, which makes sense. It's my four. So. Okay. That was our ratings of Boone Lake, Kenzie's number four. And that will be all for this episode of the Battle of the Games. Come back to us and you'll see this game again in the final rankings video. That I get final say for because I won. I've been forgetting, final I've been forgetting to, to mention. We'll see you there. Bye. Bye.